everyone welcome back to my channel this is Ravina and today we are going to cover the topic for grade 2 which is clothes we wear the EVS chapter and let's learn about all the different types of clothes that we can teach our grade 2 kids all right let's get started let's get started with our today's lesson which is clothes that we wear and their different types of fabrics this is for this discussion which will be our starter what activities did you do before coming to school why do people need clothes to wear do you know anyone who does not have clothes name some items of clothing so these answers will be asked as a prior knowledge check of the students. We'll be saying great job as soon as they give us some differentiated answers. Then we can show them, a, them any video which is available on YouTube related to clothes that they wear. That is totally on the parent or teacher's choice. Finally comes our learning objective. Describe the variety of clothes, cotton, linen, nylon and wool their properties and the process of making them so there are four basic fabrics that we are going to learn and we are going to learn about their properties as well as the process of making them here comes our we are learning to according to the three different groups that we have divided our children into so the first one here is match the pictures of fabric materials to the process of making them Second criteria is match the terms used in making different materials with their meaning. And the third one that we will learn in this chapter is give reasons for the different materials clothes are made up of. Then comes the success criteria that will be discussed that we will discuss with our children that what do we expect from them. So by the end of the chapter. The first category should be able to match the pictures of the fabric materials to the process of making them. The second group of students that we have divided should be able to match the terms used in making different materials with their meaning. And the third group should be able to give reasons for the different materials clothes are made, of, made up of. So this is the self-check, the success criteria that whether I can I need some improvement yes I am there or I'm still getting there so the three criteria they're going to put smiley accordingly when they are discussed with the success criteria here comes the important very very important concept map which is in the middle we are going to keep our topic which is clothes we wear and then comes the mind map in which it is representing what all things we are going to cover in this chapter. So on the top, we have importance of wearing clean clothes. Then comes the type of clothes, cotton, linen, wool and nylon. Then comes describe the properties of various types of clothes. Differentiation between the variety of clothes. Identification of a variety of clothes as well as their texture. texture. Then comes the clothes that we wear according to the weather. Now it is very important for the children to understand the concept map because it shows all the ingredients that we are covering up in our chapter. It doesn't mean that this PPT is consisting of all the ingredients, all the mind maps or all the uh, things that we have put on in the mind map. But might be there might be two PPTs, there might be three PPTs which all these things will be covered in two. So the concept map shows actually what we are going to teach in this whole topic. Here comes the keywords that has have to be pasted in the notebook and the children can practice writing them again and again. Then comes our, yes, methodology that has to be started with some questions. Our clothes are made from different types of materials can you name some of them so they can come up with different answers yes we wear wool we wear cotton and blah 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 whatever they know then comes our next question why do we have so many different types of materials 
So they are going to come up with different answers according to their knowledge. We have to accept their answers, keeping in mind that they don't know the concept till now. Then starts the first day activity that is related to wool. Children will be asked to take out the woolen cloth which they will hold in their hand and then they will be taught. First step in the process of obtaining the wool is shearing. The first thing that happens is sheep are sheared. The person who takes away the fleece, the thing that is on the sheep, it's, it's not directly called as wool, it's called as fleece. It is sheared from the sheep. Then comes the second point in which the wool is gathered, that fleece that we convert into wool afterwards, that fleece is gathered and then spun into wool. And the third point, wool can be knitted. That means we can knit the wool to make clothes such as hats, scarves and jumpers. Here comes step by step all the things that happens to the fleece. The process how it is converted into wool. So shearing by the farmer or who takes care of the sheep, that person, he is shearing the fleece from the sheep. Then comes second point, which is the dyed fleece. fleece. That means the fleece is dyed into different colors. Finally, it is taken into the factory. Lots of machines are there that finally gives us carding wool. So we can, we can see the fleece is manufactured and then as a product, product that we are obtaining is carding wool. And finally, in the fourth step, we are obtaining the wool now comes the properties of the woolen clothes that the children are holding in their hands now comes their we are going to take out the answers from their knowledge what they know is wool natural or man-made of course it is natural because we are obtaining it from an animal it is then processed to get the wool but at least we are getting the fleece from the animal so basically we are obtaining it from a natural resource how is the texture of a woolen cloth? Is it soft or is it hard? So here comes children knowledge. Of course, they will touch and say that it is soft. How long does it take to dry to be, if it becomes wet? So here they can, they will be start, they just start shouting with different answers. Mem two hours, three hours, four hours. We just have to ask them, it, will it take little time or more time? And then they can come up with the answer. Ma'am, yes, it takes a bit more time. All right. Then comes important question, which is do woolen clothes shrink? So, of course, they shrink if they are washed in cold water. Otherwise, if washed in hot water, they do not shrink. So that is what we have to clear them with the concept of shrinking the shrinking of woolen clothes. Now comes cotton. We obtain cotton from cotton plant which is then picked and spun into a thread. Now there is a process of picking and spanning into a thread. We will be learning about it further in the next slide. And then comes our second point. This thread is then woven together, not knitted. We knitted the wool but here for cotton, it is woven together to make fabric, which is cut out further and sewn together to make clothing that we wear. Might be shirts, might be nice, nice skirts or whatever dresses we can think of. Now comes the process of making cotton. We need to separate the soft, fluffy part and the soft seeds. That means first, as soon as the cotton is grown, we take it off. And take out the seeds. Now this can be done either manually. Like in previous days. It was done manually by people. By persons. But nowadays since we are having lots of machines. So it, be, it has become a very easy easy process. Now this process of separating these seeds. And fibers from the cotton plant. From the cotton. This process is known as ginning. 
Now, after learning about the process of ginning, here comes the next process that the children have to keep in mind, which is the process of making yarns from fibers. Now, we are going to show them the cotton, where the parents or the teachers, anyone, they can show them a cotton and they can just shuffle it in their hands, just a little bit of cotton, and then they can show the soft thread that they obtain from cotton and it looks like a fiber now this fiber through the with the help of machinery of course is then converted into yarns which finally is cut and then we obtained the fabric the shirts the pants or whatever the cotton fabric as a result so this whole process of making yarns from fiber is called as spinning now comes the notebook work we have done the cross curricular link directly with sst which machine was used in india to make yarn when there were no machines it was charkha and who used charkha in previous time we have seen a lot of uh, pictures of somebody you might have if you might remember so yes of course it, uh, it was used by Mahatma Gandhi. Charka was very commonly used by Mahatma Gandhi. Next comes the properties of cotton clothes. The same way we did of woolen clothes. Here comes the properties of cotton clothes. So the first question is, is cotton natural or man-made? Of course, we are obtaining it directly from a plant. So it becomes natural. It's a natural one. How is the texture of a cotton cloth? Is it soft or hard? They'll be holding it so that they can easily identify and tell. Yes, of course, it's soft. Then comes, how long does it take to dry if it becomes wet? It does not take much time. It does not, as compared to woolen clothes, cotton clothes, dry much more quickly. Here we have to clear them with this concept. Do cotton clothes shrink? Uh, yes, they definitely shrink at their first wash. So these are important properties of cotton clothes that they need to remember because we will be giving them the task as homework related to the properties of all the cloths or fabrics they are going to learn. For day two, I think for day one, cotton and woolen, the learning and the process is enough for them to take in it will be too much so for day two we can go to the next two fibers that we have mentioned in our concept map as well as our learning objective so we can continue with that learning objective for the next day as well and we can start with the recall of cotton and woolen clothes their properties and then we can move forward for the linen fabric so the first point is linen flax is harvested and then threshed to get rid of all the seeds that means if we are harvesting it, that means it is a crop. Crop which is sown in the field. The seeds are sown and then we obtain linen flax which is harvested and threshed. Threshed so that we can get rid of whatever seeds are there in it. Then comes the next one, next point. Retting. Now, retting is something which is very important for everyone here to understand. Now, this is where the inside of the flax fiber is left to rot away. After the linen flax is harvested, it is left over there so that the portion that we do not want, the inside portion is left to rot away to leave the outer fiber that we actually need. Now, after this, the rough straw, rough straw after, of course, it gets rot and it gets dried might be. So, this rough straw is scraped away using combs. Now, there might be particular machinery or something that are having combs in the front. So, they help a lot in scraping away the rough straw which we require and the other rotten part that we do not require. Then comes a third point. Whatever is left over is then finally spun to make linen. Here comes the properties of linen clothes. They will be asked to take out the linen cloth from their back and particularly the most common that they can take out is a towel. 
they can take out towels they can take out different types of cloths different uh, which are made of the uh, towel materials so then we are going to put up the questions from them is linen natural or man made of course it is natural because we are getting it from a crop the one that we have sown in the, uh, sown in the field how is the texture of a linen cloth soft or hard of course it is very soft how long does it take to dry if it becomes wet it does not take much time but among all three woolen cotton and linen i would say that cotton is the one which dries up the most easy and in a fast manner then comes linen and woolen takes a lot of time so do linen clothes shrink yes they shrink just like cotton and they must not be washed in the hot water this is what they have to keep in mind the properties of all three fabrics that they have done till now finally comes our last and final and important fabric which is nylon so the first point for nylon is nylon is made by mixing chemicals together which are heated up that means here we are cleared with the first step that it is not natural it is man made the people are mixing chemicals which are heated up together and finally when they it cools down we put it into a machine and then we get nice nice ribbons because it becomes hard when it cools down then we put it up in a machinery and then from the machine it comes out as ribbons then comes a third step this is turned into nylon thread which is woven into sheets of fabric which our clothes are made of we will ask the children to guess any cloth material that is made of nylon and if they had brought something from home so the most common one that they will have in their hands will be the beach wear the swimming pool dresses that they wear of course now comes the properties the same way we did the three fabrics now comes the properties of nylon cloths is nylon natural or man made nylon is man made how is the texture of a nylon cloth soft or hard they can come up with the answer of course it becomes soft so that it's easy to wear now comes how long does it take to dry if it becomes wet we wear it in the swimming pool cause it gets dried extremely fast as compared to all the other fabrics that we have learned nylon is the one fabric nylon is one fabric which dries extreme extremely fast then comes do linen clothes shrink they can shrink only in hot dryer so we are not going to wash it in a dryer at any cost only with hands we are going to put it in the water and take it off so that it dries up easily otherwise we will spoil our nylon cloth then comes task 1 as divided into groups our class has been divided so task 1 children are going to match the picture to the space steps for each fabric that we have discussed already in the class so we will be giving them four pages of the same and they are going to match the process with the picture of how they are made the children with task 2 will be matching the terms used in making different materials with their meaning weaving knitting spinning ginning fiber etc etc then here we are going to give them a question they are going to write independent answer so that we can see what differentiation can be there in the class why do we need cloths after they come up with different answers they write down different answers in their notebooks we can discuss the answer we need clothes to cover our bodies what kind of clothes do we wear when it is hot we need to wear clothes that keep us cool when it is hot that means they can also come up with the word cotton we need to wear cotton fabric because it keeps us cool when it is hot what kind of clothes do we wear when it is cold we wear woolen clothes to keep our body warm when it is cold now after they completed their work they'll be getting a good job here comes the extended task for the children who finish their tasks very very fast and they complete their work on time so they'll be having an extended task they which is cross curricular link with english and it'll come in the notebook 
write a few lines on your favorite cloth material and why you like to wear it so they can write what they want to write about their favorite cloth material and here you go good job finally comes the homework task that i have been saying from the first from the starting of the uh, video identify the types of fabrics and list their properties so this they will be doing at home they will be pasting the fabric swatch or its name then they are going to write the fiber whether it's natural or man-made then what is the construction is that fiber weaved knitted spinned etc what and then finally the uses the success criteria will be discussed with the children again and finally this is how our lesson for today will be over hope you all enjoyed the lesson as much as i did and next time i'll be ready with another lesson with something new something effective and with new ideas please do not forget to leave comments and do like subscribe and hit the bell icon notification to get the notifications for my latest videos and see you all love you bye bye see you all next time